What is up, everybody? Josh here again, and today we have an Icarus Week 119 update. This week we get these, the new Bramble plant that was added into Icarus this week. We also got some news of the next big update for Icarus, which is the animal update, and some more news of water purification next week. Let's get into it, shall we? Icarus Week 19 brings brambles. Icarus Week 19 update. Grow, harvest, and deploy the new bramble defenses. You can now grow and harvest brambles just like other crops before being deployed around your base as a defense system. They also got news of the next big update and paid content pack. The new packs being the Leica and Creature Commons DLC. They also have some more balance fixes for the networks and batteries that they've had weeks ago let's jump in and have a read notable improvements for this week are the following they improved the performance of the tier 3 spawn blocker by significantly reducing the number of times it will be update a spawn blocker area which now only updates when adding or running out of fuel they updated the modifier effectiveness display scaling around 100 instead of positive or negative effect this better shows that less effective modifiers only have x percent effect for example a 20 percent effect Effectiveness modifier shows as 20% instead of negative 80%. 150% modifier shows as 150% instead of 50%, plus 50%. They updated many UI elements to prevent small box next to device inventory when modifiers are not present, and they fixed Nomad, the mission. Moving on to the only thing added this week, we have Brambles. What joy. Brambles is a new base defense in the game that you can grow from seed. You can buy them from the Orbital Workshop, making them available in any of the biomes or maps, DLCs, whatever. They cost 50 Ren to unlock and 20 Ren to craft. They do have a quite high fatigue modifier, but you do get seeds back from just like other crops. And they do require more regular reseeding than other sturdy crops. You can also get them from native brambles on Prometheus. So if you go to a regular bramble place and use a sickle, you'll be able to get some seeds pretty easily. When you place them, you can't move them, but they're pretty lightweight. This week, they've also have the damage of the hedgehogs, but they doubled the self damage taken by fortification spikes, basically meaning that it effectively doubles the deterioration of fortification spikes when impaling enemies. With this change, they have adjusted the mission dispatch, which gives it a challenging horde mode, which they've adjusted by reducing the spawn count of the foes to match the increased self damage of fortification spikes. The event should have a similar level of challenge, but increased performance since there's not so many mobs. They're now working on more automated deployable defenses in the future, and this will mean more balancing of the existing ones. Hopefully they don't nerf just stuff into the ground. Under farming, uh, all the way to the right hand side, you'll see Bramble farming packet, 50 ren, 20 to craft. We're gonna craft us a few here and grow some Brambles for you so we can check out this new base defense. Just gonna right click on the Bramble packet and consume it so we can get some Bramble seeds. Then we're gonna take that, put it on our bar and plant some Brambles here in our crop plots. Let them do their magic. And you can see you can grow brambles in your crop plots. So we got some brambles done here. Let's go ahead and get us a sickle on the bar there. There and see what we get. We just got a regular titanium sickle. Got some, got a seed and looks like three bramble bushes. So we're gonna gather all these bushes that we can. Now it looks like you actually don't get stuck by the ones that you just straight up grow which is pretty nice, I guess. Then we're gonna place these bushes. Then all you gotta do is take the bramble bush and you just gotta put it on your bar. And then you can left click it and place it wherever you want and it will damage anything that goes to the bramble bush. Kinda like so. When you go up to the bramble bush, you can it says press E to interact, but you can't really do nothing with it. And it does take a little bit of damage. It'll sit there and take just a small amount of damage before it's completely destroyed. They're very, very, very weak. And now that bramble is completely destroyed. And of course, as mentioned, you can get brambles in the wild as well on Prometheus in the swamps. All you gotta do is just gather them. You'll get fiber and bramble seed. The bramble seed you can plant and then you can make the bramble bushes. So it looks like you can get quite a few bramble seeds from just the bramble bushes in the wild. And we're gonna see how good these brambles do actually. See if they can protect our guys are here with a horde mode. What just 
happened? Lag. This game just lags all the time. So yeah, that's Brambles. They're pretty bad. I feel like they're really weak, like super weak, but what do you expect for a grown crop, right? I mean, it's it's really not that great of uh, an addition to Icarus, if you ask me. Not just because I hate Brambles, but also because they're really super weak. It really doesn't take a lot of damage for you to destroy these. Or very long. And, and then it's dead. And with this next thing we're going to mention, I feel like they're kind of backpedaling, to be honest. And that changes that they pretty much double the damage that spike walls take whenever you use them. So whenever you're in the spike walls, you'll notice that it's only doing like four, two damage to me, but it's doing a hundred damage to the wall whenever we're in it like this. If you have quite a few enemies in this wall right here, it's going to take this wall out quite quickly. So they've doubled the damage to this for whenever you're actually taking damage or whenever an enemy's at the wall that's taking damage. It will take a ton more damage to the structure than it was before. And of course, hedgehogs now take half the damage that they used to. They half the damage on hedgehogs. This week they go on to talk about how they keep changing batteries and networks. Unfortunately, they fixed several missions that had issues with different types of issues with, with the electricity, with the changes that they made, fix the wind turbine auto looping incorrectly and fix certain inspected devices, such as water pumps, not showing modifiers and network UI resulting in an empty screen. Clients should now see everything normally with the electric network whenever they inspect it via the flow meter. And they improved the spline connection logic to provide smoother connections to other splines. This prevents cases where the splines would wrap around existing pucks to enter from certain angles to new puck spline nodes. It affects both the water and power network piping. They also did some balances this week. Wind turbine damage has been modified to provide a smoother degradation through storms. And they are monitoring feedback and acknowledge that some people do not like the added maintenance but enjoy the extra weather effects. And they're still keen to hear and see feedback as always. With this change here, and you actually don't see it until you get the change log, but I'm going to show you right now what they did to windmills. So we got two test windmills out over here, and these two test windmills have just been through two storms. And this is how much damage they have taken. They have taken 80, they're at 88% durability. If you press E and inspect it, it's reducing the energy flow rate by 14%. This is two windstorms have reduced this from... 1,750 to 1,505, which is more than it was before. And this one as well, same thing. It's 14% at 1505. So yeah, the wind is really damaging. We're on a hard, I don't know if that makes much of a difference. Probably does, probably more intense storms, but yeah, it's it's worse than it was. I, I, I'm just gonna keep my mouth shut, honestly, at this point. Uh, I've already decided just to let everybody know that I am no longer updating my Icarus God videos. Once they become obsolete, I will be taking them down permanently. And we will continue for now doing the update videos. But uh, I think that's I think that's it for us in Icarus. They just, they just don't keep adding new content to get me entertained or playing the game, to be honest. And they keep making things more of a chore and more of a hassle than fun. Enjoy your new windmills. So now as far as connecting devices, you shouldn't get really weird loops and stuff like that like we used to. Say if we're going to try to connect this one to this one right here, it's going to connect just straight to it. If it can. Oops, actually that didn't work. But it shouldn't do the weird loops. Sometimes you get like really weird loops and stuff like that. I think that one's just bugged. This one right here, it used to like loop and do something really weird. Now you can just pretty much connect straight to it. I don't know if that actually is working to be honest with you. But see, that's going to connect right there instead of doing like a weird loop and trying to do something else. So, so they've definitely improved how you place wires, at least. And we have news of the next big update for Icarus, the Leica update or the Animal Companions update. 
They've quietly, well not really quietly, we've been singing in the changelog, been working on their next big update for a couple of months now. They're excited to let you know the details. Now that networks and batteries are half released. Like it is their Animal Companions update, which is well into development and entering its final stages now. This update is focused on improving player experience with tamed creatures, including all important ability to be able to pet your animals. This update also includes the ability to bring your tamed creatures to orbit and ain't call it to the planet as needed. Same as workshop gear. They're also adding talent trees for each mount with the ability for mounts to gain experience just as you do. They're also adding two new tame creatures exclusively ordered from orbit with their own gatherable resources. New tier 3 and tier 4 water food troughs and more. They'll have a little bit more details to share with us on what to expect next week. And next week they are also adding water purification and changing how water works. Next week they're changing water, a new survival dynamic to water purification. Water throughout the game will provide additional bonuses based on the cleanliness of it, with devices throughout the different tiers providing methods of purifying water. We got the change log. We're going to go over not the new content section because we've already gone over everything. They only added the brambles. We're going to go over the fix section. Start with it first. There's quite a few things they've already mentioned in it. Looks like the brutalist lamp can now be put on objects like tables. Here's the changes they made to wind turbines. They previously would cap to a very high health where storms would have a negligible impact. They are still unable to be destroyed by storms, but will eventually result in zero base production. They have the damage that hedgehogs deal themselves when spiking enemies. Double the damage for fortifications when spiking enemies. Don't worry, they're still much stronger than hedgehogs. Yeah, like basically half the durability. And they mention when turbine damage taken is more consistent at different health levels. Let's get them over the future content section. Talking about the tier four water trough and a bunch of other stuff they've talked about before in the future content. We're gonna have a nine of diamond shield. Looks like we're getting a swamp ape. Waiting behavior tree setup for movement and attacks. So it's gonna be a hostile creature, looks like. Hey look, finally they're working on that prototype tree respawn. I thought we were supposed to have that a while back. That's it for this change log. And thank you so much to the Late Night Crew, KHX, Sergio, and Wolfie, who's been a member for 14 months. Thank you so much for that. Sandy, Silver, John, EMC2, Rod Dom, Aaron, Steady Bob, Jim K72, Kristen, Jaybird, Fubar, Chris, Sanchez, MTZ Gaming, Gamer Joe, Sky Reaper One, Hagar, Metal Storm, Alpha Tanker, Jason, Valiant, Bar K912, Gabe, 427, Kevin, Mom, Fabio, and Josh Jordan. Thank you so much for being part of the Late Night Crew, for supporting the channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you so much to our Late Night Crew supporters as well. And that's it for this video. Don't forget, if you like what you see, to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Subscribing will get you the weekly Icarus update videos. And hopefully, we'll see you next time. Peace.